Today we're going to talk about the absolute best start you can do for Diablo 3 patch 274 season 27. I get this question all day on stream, blood, like what's the best start? Like what's the best to get into early speed farming? So I thought I would cover it in this video. No sponsors on the video, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification. I have a website with builds and other videos in the description as well. So what does it mean? What does start mean? It means a lot of different things to everybody. Some people tell me it's one to 70. Some people tell me it's one to GR 70. Some people tell me it's one to GR 120. Some people tell me it's one till I pass out with Cheetos and Mountain Dew all over my body. So to me, we're just going to use my parameters. Okay. And what I think the best start is like zero to speed farming, whether that's T7, T11. Obviously, you should just play whatever you want. This is a badass season with tons of 21 different legendary powers, not counting the set reworks that we got. So just play whatever you want. It's totally fine. Um, I normally play solo and go LOD, and I don't even go for Hadrig anyway. But this video is based around Hadrig. I will recommend some lawn builds or LOD builds along the way, though. So just stay with me, okay? So here's the sets for season 27 for Hadrig's gift. We got UE, Unhallowed Essence for Demon Hunter, Whirlwind Barb, Wrath of the Waste for Barbarian, uh, Tal Rasha for Wizard, Helltooth for Witch Doctor, Arraignment for Monk, Roland, keep Roland, Roland for Crusader, Rothma for Necromancer. Okay, so you can see all seven and you can just let it soak in for a second. Before I get into the tier list portion, just remember, even the worst is good. This is Diablo 3. We got multipliers out the wazoo, okay? So you can kick ass with anybody. This is just for the sweaty min-maxers out there or for those of us that just want an easy start or want to maybe get a game plan. Sometimes the game plan is more fun than actually playing the game, right? All right, in my B tier, okay? Roland, Wizard, and Raymond. Roland has a lot of good things going for it as it has a built-in attack speed buff, it has damage reduction, and um, you know, again, we're gonna go into all the details for each build after this portion, but I wanna get this out the way first. Okay, so Wizard is also in the B tier. Uh, Tal Rasha, they just refused to put damage reduction on Tal Rasha. They went with immunities and they went with a boost to all res for all resistances. Uh, they just refuse to put like 80% damage reduction like DMO gets or Firebird I think is 75% damage reduction. They keep trying to do this flavor thing and it makes it really squishy. Rainment's way better than you think. You can speed farm, you have mobility, it destroys like T7 to T9 early and you might not think that that's high but that's really good. You can sit there until you get the inner set which can still destroy, absolutely mops up Torment 16, right? So just stick on T9, right? Till you get your in a set. In the A tier, I have UE Unhallowed Essence. This would be over Witch Doctor, but then we have also Witch Doctor. Okay, so Witch Doctor has good things going for it. You know, the whole set buffs all your pets. All your pets just go kick some butt. Arguably the fastest, if not the best, massacre bonus chain class. So from 1 to 70, 70 doing massacre bonuses you'll beat anybody probably in a competition just because you have so many dots. It's almost impossible for the dot to drop off the target, unless you're me, of course. <laughs> and then UE, um, you just want to roll max discipline everywhere, use the lightning multi-shot, and you're good to go. You can even do some clever tricks. Again, you know, check the build portion of the guide. And the A tier, we have Whirlwind and Rothma. Okay, Rothma actually felt tankier then Whirlwind, believe it or not, because of the redesign where they got, you guessed it, damage reduction on their sets. I don't know why Tal Rasha doesn't have it, but it is what it is. Rothma's pretty tanky, and it's like a pet build, so you're not, like, in charge of doing anything too crazy. Like, you don't have to stand in the line of fire. You don't have to be up close. You don't have to be at a certain part. You're just kind of there um, triggering your command skeleton, lowering your cooldown for Army of the Dead. So Rothma is actually probably the best start and probably the second fastest leveler 1 to 70. Um, it is squishy for hardcore, but um, like I said, you know, once you get that Rothma set, you're pretty much good to go. And then Barb, obviously, you can go Whirlwind Barb into War Whirlwind Barb for pushing. You can go Whirlwind Barb into support, Whirlwind Barb into the new Hoda build. Um, you know, you can still play Frenzy, Leapquake. Barb has a lot of dope options this season. And, you know, you get that big pull radius when you're trying to speed farm. So 
Barb is doing it is really good in a really, really good spot. Obviously, this whole ranking can get flipped around on its head. Let's say you're playing wizard and you get the arcane orb weapon and you get the arcane orb offhand and you get freaking, you know, all the legendaries for the set just randomly by playing or you get lucky early. You can skip tiers. You can go from freaking um, at the bottom of B tier all the way to S tier. So before we get into the quick build guides of every single class, I only do this bare bone testing so that whoever picks this guide up is going to be better off than me. They're going to have a few random legendaries here or there. They're going to have their Bane of the Powerful gem and so forth, right? Like this is just me like seeing like what if you strip it down, bare bones, like what do these builds perform like? Six piece raiment. I went with Crippling Wave. All you basically got to do is Dashing Strike to buff your generators and then Generator to buff your Dashing Strike. So you just pretty much dash and punch and that's pretty much it. I did decide to go with Crudus Boots on here um, as they do a lot of damage and you can use it for like speed farming, especially low level content with nothing else. I went with Water Ally. Let me just kind of go through the build right here so you can see it. Sweeping Winds for more resource. Survivability, Epiphany, Desert Shroud. So here's what the build looks like. Similar to what I said earlier, you just punch things and dash around. Um, when you dash, you get that six seconds buff on your character, so then you can do more damage with your generators. And then you have your Mystic Ally in the background just kind of triggering on its own. Really easy to play, really passive. And yeah, you got built-in mobility. That's pretty rare. Not that many classes have that. There's a few wizard sets that have teleport, but you know, it's kind of cool that um, this has like a built-in kind of NGM. You can see me just kind of dashing around based on resource. For Wizard, I kicked around the idea of using a Disintegrate Start. So this is what a Disintegrate Start looks like. Then we tried Orb Start, which mana intensive. Again, we're not, you didn't use any legendaries to go with it. But ultimately, using the level one Winter's Flurry. So if you don't know, if you roll orbs at level one sources on Wizard, there's only one possible outcome and that's the Winter's Flurry. So if you don't want to roll it at the start of your season, again, just make a level one alt, log in, go to Kadala, roll sources. When you get it, put it in the cube, and then there you go, right? It's really easy to get. If it's legendary, that's the only one it's gonna be. So we talked about Wizard having crappy survivability. So the Winter's Flurry also has a 25% chance to release Frost Nova when enemies are killed by cold damage. So now you have a lot of Frost Novas triggering everywhere, freezing the mobs, not hitting you. Uh, so that definitely helps circumvent your bad survivability with your set. The way Winter's Flurry works is you just cast Blizzard and then cast Hydra. And then enemies inside the Blizzard take extra damage from Hydra. So it's just like cast Blizzard and Hydra on your target. And that's basically it. It's almost similar to... Rothma we talked about earlier where you don't need to actually target your pets do the targeting for you. So here's the build. So you have it like that. I went with maces because they have a high damage range, but you could use whatever one hander you want. I also went with Ashnagars. It's not necessary, but again, it's the only bracer at level one. So you can roll both of these with like very limited blood shards early game. And by the time you get to T9, T10, T11 to where you need a build like this, you already will have enough blood shards. You should already have them by then, right? Here's kind of what the build looks like. I'm just dropping blizzards, dropping my hydra. Um, every time you cast a spell, there's no cooldown on the meteor also. They changed it. There's no cooldown on the meteor for Talrasha. So you'll see more meteors than normal. So them being frozen, you know, it actually, la um, more meteors do land also. So there's kind of nice, you can see right there, some nice synergy on top of it. Um, you have a little bit more control with the set. It's not so chaotic as it is. So yeah, definitely try this version out. You can mix up the generators if you don't like Wave of Force. I was using Wave of Force. It does refund um, arcane power. But yeah, as long as you're using four different elements, you can see in the bottom left corner, you have your four elemental stack. For the Helltooth starter, it like I said, it does buff your pets. So zombie dog, gargantuan, and zombie bears. We tried the pet and we tried the zombie bear start. And the spear was way better than the pets. So I will skim through the pet one. Just if you're curious, this is what I ended up with. You're going to have to slow that down. I went a little fast. Maybe I'll do another loop for you guys. <laughs> 
but yeah so the spear there's only like two possible outcomes if you upgrade spears the scrimshaw is really easy to get you know within reason remember you get your sage set auto learned at the blacksmith at level 70. so right when you hit 70 you can craft a sage set put it on your character or give it to your follower and now you're getting extra db so you should be getting dbs rolling in fast enough to get that scrimshaw before it matters before you get to t7 and all that so here is the scrimshaw build all you really want to do is use wall of death and spam zombie bear and that's pretty much it so this is the zombie charger slash zombie bear version all you really want to do is keep up your buffs cast wall of death and then spam zombie bears and things just explode um you should have no problem farming like t10 with this build um especially if you get lakumbas you can probably go up to higher to t11 like you can with um the s tier builds the s tier starters but yeah i have witch doctor what down here in the a tier um it's really just one away from s you know you're like one lakumba because you can see the damage is there this, the scrimshot does seven times damage for zombie bears so you're just one one like maybe survivability away from being there even an aquila would be really good for you for the ue build um you want max discipline your builds built off max discipline so use your resources to roll the secondary property you can see in the secondary it says 11 max discipline so try to get max on all your pieces the three pieces you need to worry about are your chest and your weapon and your offhand so I'm using holy point shot. I'm not using impale though, right? I'm using this holy point shot because I'm recommending you go for legendary. If you have like a rare, the max discipline you can get is eight to 10. But if you get even a crappy legendary like cluck eyes or a holy point shot, just go for this. Make sure it has max discipline, right? So don't just salvage a cluck eye. If it has 12 max discipline on it, it's probably gonna hit harder than a rare bow or like a bow with no discipline on it. You literally get a 350% increased damage for every single point of discipline you have. And it's very noticeable this early in the game when you're trying to get through T7, T9, T11 and make your way to T16. I went with the Topaz and the Helm for that reduced cost resource to help a lot. Um, this is the build right here, evasive fire. Okay. Um, Wraps of Clarity are the only bracers at level one. So remember, make that level one alt, roll bracers. You're gonna need the survivability. And I put Reaper's Wraps here because if you're just present for any Malthiel kill at max level, you'll get the pattern for Reaper's Wraps. And this does help with resource. This isn't mandatory. This is just here, just to remind me to tell you guys, you should go get it. You know, you have to do it to get your Hadrigs anyway. You might as well show up for that Malthiel kill. I don't gotta tell you guys about UE, but I basically just uh, tap my generator and then tap my spender. So it's like generator, spender, generator, spender. I don't have focus and restraint, but that's kind of how I play it. It reminds me to keep up, um, cause you get more resource back with the UE set. So it just, I think it just reminds me to always tag mobs to get more resource to sustain the multi shots, right? So this also is in the A tier. This could easily go to S tier if you get a Yang's Recurve, if you get a Dead Man's Legacy, that extra damage, you would just be whopping mobs. But it is very squishy and vulnerable, so I would recommend you try to get Raps of Clarity. Also spamming your generator would proc Raps of Clarity to give you more survivability. You can see the Bracer buff on the bottom of the screen. Um, every time I use it, it keeps it up at 50% damage reduction. Also with UE, you wanna be, I think it's 10 yards away from all targets to get your damage reduction buff also. So this set's about staying back. For the rolling build, I went with that denial shield at level one. There's only two possible shields. So just roll shields at level one. This will help you while actually leveling as well. So this is pretty good. Um, here's the build I went with. You can change whatever generator you want. Um, Blazing sweep, I believe is the best one for leveling or for early progression like this because of the fire dot on the target movement resource this is going to give me resource um, survivability and then you know all these other passives here so the only thing you need to basically know is you know hit enemies with your shield glare to get your resource back use provoke to get your resource back 
and then spam sweep attack, you're pretty much good to go. You can use punish to give you a little crit buff um, in between targets, but that's just there as a filler. You mostly just want to use sweep attack. A little side note, this is probably the best GR20 clear in the game, or it's up there because of the four piece bonus for Roland has a 17,000, 17,500% damage increase to sweep attack. So that's a lot of damage for GR20. So you should have no problem getting your GR20 clear complete with literally nothing and um, getting that six piece bonus. So you can see you just jump in. I just start spamming everything, keeping everything up. For the Wrath of the Waste Whirlwind starter, you definitely want to go for that Bandamite at level one. These are just here because you can't uncube something like we talked about. So I'm not using Frenzy, so these are just dead, right? But this, I definitely recommend you get. There's only two possible rings at level one. So you make a level one character, like we said, log in, roll rings, and win. Especially on a hardcore, man. This is 80% damage reduction is no joke. The set also gives you 50% damage reduction. You might think you're overcapped on damage reduction, like you don't need that much early game, but you do. Like you're, you're taking so much damage. You don't have all the build complete. You don't have Wrath Berserker up full time. You're gonna need all the help you can get and you're melee, right? So you're up in the thick of it. Here's the build. Furious Charge, you can use whatever movement ability you want, like Sprint or Leap, it's up to you, or even Ground Stomp. I use Wind Shear because it gets you Fury back when you hit. You could also use Weapon Master instead of one of these passives if you want. Weapon Master gives you Fury back if you're using Mighty Weapons. Feel free to use one-handed Mighty Weapons or a two-hander. I prefer the two-hander. Remember, Rend scales off your weapon damage, so early game, having a two-hander is gonna hit really hard. That goes with every class. Like, the bigger the damage range, the bigger you're gonna hit. You know what it is. You jump in and you whirlwind, you drop Rend every, I don't know, five seconds or so, whoever you feel like. Like, if the damage is really good, so it doesn't matter. I left all those globes back there too, so. Yeah, I got a double kill, didn't even realize it. So Whirlwind's really, really good. This is a Greater Rift level 50, which is almost equivalent to like a T11, I believe. So yeah, you should be able to jump in right away and just make sure you keep up your Band of Might by using Ground Stomp, Leap, or Furious Charge. And that's it, man. Spin to win is back, baby. All right, for Necromancer. Again, this is the last build in the S tier. We have Whirlwind Barb and Rothma in the S tier for the best start for season 27. This is the biggest one because you could go LOD with a billion builds like we talked about. Necromancer has easy to access multipliers. There's a million ways you can go. So I'm gonna show you this way, but you can go on my website and go under the Diablo section, season start guides, right? Diablo season start guide on top. So you have to scroll down. There's other resources here as well like cheat sheets and things like that. But you'll see leveling fresh guides. So if you guys need a leveling guide, I have leveling guides for every class as well. But the thing is Necromancer has like so many things. So if you upgrade a two-hander, you're gonna get a guaranteed multiplier. So I have a starter build for Nova or, or Bone Spear. This is a starter build for Nayers. This is a starter build for Shadowhook. Okay, so. There's a lot of builds. This can be build overload. And I even have tips and tricks down here, max essence and all that. So, but that's just there if you want to play lawn and it's there for other builds. So if you're curious about like a lawn or a leveling witch doctor build, you can level with spirit barrage. You can go lawn spirit barrage. All this stuff is great. And it's, you know, it's there. The information's there for you guys. But this is the Rothma starter build, okay? Siphon blood. There we go. Revive. Okay. So I'm not using Death Nova, so you can just, this is dead. Obviously these things don't help me. So this is just with the Rothma set and nothing else. And we have a very comfortable time on the T11 level, just like Barb did. So to me, these are two S tier builds. Even if you get nothing, you don't have your nothing, right? You just walk in with just this, the six piece bonus. You'll be okay if you follow this guide. So here's the Necromancer build in action. Again, I'm casting on elites looking for as much as I'm kind of like elite elite hunting, but you can still kill density, right? Commanding my skeletons on the elites, holding down the generator on elites when available using, you know, army of the dead, 
making sure my revive minions are capped at 10. You know, try not to stand in affixes, try not to die. You're still you're still squishy as a necro, but that damage reduction on the set is really noticeable. You can see how close I get to dying so many times and I, I never die, right? Because you are, you're still tanky, you still have that damage reduction. It's still really, really good. You can see how we're pulling ahead on a 50. And this is not efficient. You don't have to do a 50. You can do something lower. If you get lucky and get Relena's or Trigul or Nayers, right? Just adjust to whatever drop you get and you guys will have no issue just continuing the pain train with the build. Man, I didn't realize how big this video was gonna get. I'm exhausted. I have like an hour of footage to go through. Um, I hope you like the video. I hope it helps you. I hope you like the format. I thought it made sense to me to kind of give you the information up front and then give you the details later. Don't forget to like the video if you got anything out of it. And yeah, I'll be streaming all season long. This is Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.